Welcome to another episode of my podcast. Yeah, um, I'm ready for this election to be over with, to be honest with you. I, um, I'm sick of everybody's shit. If <clears throat> Donald Trump loses, Donald Trump loses. As long as it's a fair election, I don't have a problem with it because that's how the election process works. Unlike the lefties who will burn down the majority of America if their candidate doesn't win. The problem I have is reading an, I was, I was reading an article about reading an article about why the left got it so wrong on this election. If you look at every poll, every poll predicted that Joe Biden would win in a landslide. So what did they get wrong? Because in 2016, in the run-up to that election, going in to the election that night, we were told that Hillary Clinton had something like a 93% chance of winning the election. Second, I want to say this. Without COVID... And without the lockdowns and the fuckery that was played, you know, isn't it convenient? I was thinking about this today. Isn't it convenient that right around the time a uh, guy who's known to procure young women for, uh, for, for powerful men and blackmail them, and they're all coming out and denying they had anything to do with it, yet they were all paying this guy, <coughs> mysteriously commit suicide in prison. And then it's revealed that there really is a cable of high-ranking government officials and rich guys that are pedophiles. Isn't it convenient that a global pandemic breaks up I'm not saying it's, that's not like a conspiracy theory. That's a, that's a, that's actually what happened. Now, I'm not saying there was a cable of guys going around and they actually planned this thing, like release the Kraken, but it wouldn't be surprising to me if they were like, Hey China, um, look, man, we're willing to sacrifice the U S economy to keep from it, to keep it from being revealed that uh, the entire United States of America is run by a bunch of chomos. You think you could have lax security at one of your bioweapons facilities because you're already known for it. And yet, we know that you'll recover from it quickly because you're an authoritarian regime and you'll just go into lockdown and uh, we'll spend the next year fighting about it and we'll get Donald Trump out of office because he's not one of the guys that's been embedded with the deep state. That being said, Biden had zero chance of beating Donald Trump had COVID not come out and the left, specifically in conjunction with the media and big tech, were able to seize upon this opportunity. And don't get me wrong, I don't. I mean the far left when I say this, but the Democratic Party has drifted so far left that it has forced independent, socially liberal people like myself to have to snap right on it as a pullback. And it's something that I wanted to point out. So COVID doesn't come up. Donald Trump has about a 0% chance the way the economy was running along, even though we all know that that's financial engineering and that it's really the government propping up the stock market with cheap debt because it, it favors Wall Street and the rich, okay? It, 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 it screws the small-time investor like you or I who has years to accumulate stocks because we're actually buying artificially inflated uh, equities so our money doesn't go as far. Now,
after that ramble, we get back to where I wanted to go with this. How did the left get it so wrong on this election two times in a row? Well, I'm here to tell you. It's because they live in an echo chamber. And they want to do this thing to control the narrative. That they, they don't understand their they don't they think that they get to declare something to you. Like if they make a claim and you say that you don't agree, what they do is they come back at you, they do it with firearms all the time. You say, well, listen, man, we're not talking about all firearms here. We're just talking about AR-15s. And when you say, yeah, okay, well, first off, I'm not going to do the slippery slope argument, but what I am going to say is that uh, once you take the AR-15s, the semi-automatic rifles, which are used in less homicides per year than blunt objects, um, then you're going to come after the handguns, which are used in the majority of murders. I'm not going to be disarmed by the state. You can't simultaneously make the argument that the government is a white supremacist organization and tyrannical, and then, yeah, they should be the only people with firearms. When you make that argument that's logical back to them, what do they retreat to? Well, you just want kids to die. Because, no, of course, nobody wants to be accused of that. You know, it's, I mean... It's a it's a it's a stifling way of it's crushing dissent. And that's what it is. It's the left's tactic because they don't want to debate. They don't. It, it's an authority. It, it, it's drifted so far left instead of being open minded. It's now an authoritarian thing. You either do as I say, you vote how I I say, and you have the same opinions of me, or I get you canceled by making unsubstantiated claims against you. It's the same thing the left does. They say, if you voted for Donald Trump, you're racist and you're homophobic. You're racist and you're homophobic for voting for Donald Trump. Well, if you point out that Donald Trump was the first president in my, the first president in history to actually go into office in front into office as in favor of gay marriage. That's right. Donald Trump, the racist, the bigot, the homophobe, was the first president to go into office pro gay marriage. Now, you can make some arguments that he didn't articulate it right about certain trans issues, this and that. But there's a nugget of truth in a lot of the things that he says. You know, I don't on trans issues. You, you you're gonna have to you're gonna have to unpack that argument with me. If you make the argument that an adult should be allowed to change their body if that makes them happy. I'm more than happy to call that person a woman and I, I'm not judging them for it. I'd be more than happy to hang out with them, you know, be friends with them. Uh, you can't exactly call me a transphobic person if I don't want to go if I don't want to go to bed with that person. okay? That's not how that works. You don't get to shame me into finding something attractive that I don't find attractive. Okay? It's the, well, if you're not attracted to large women, you're a fattest. You're, you're sizest. No, it's, I'm just not attracted to you. You know, there's plenty of woman, women out there that would look at me, even though I'm in shape and I'm a decent looking dude, I'm a pretty good looking guy. There's a lot of overweight women that would look at me and be like, yeah, I'm not attracted to you. And I just have to accept it. I can't get mad. It's not how that works. I don't then get to accuse her of being a bigot towards people that are follically challenged because she doesn't like bald men. She doesn't like bald men. She doesn't like bald men. 
It's not on me to judge. And it's not on me to also come around and say, well, you're fat, so you should just take whatever you can get. Because that's all, that just shows a low self-esteem and insecurity. So we get to it. And what the left gets wrong is they're still doing it. So, instead of being allowed to have a reasoned discussion about why you voted for Donald Trump, I lay out my reasons on why I voted for Donald Trump. I think I have several times on this podcast. Donald Trump, to me, turned out to be an objectively bad president. Some of that is the continued rise of social media. Some of that is his actions and his words. Said he was going to go on to Washington, drain the swamp. Because as old Hickory said, Congress is a den of thieves and vipers. Andrew Jackson. Washington is just corrupt to its core. It's run by oligarchs. He knew how this stuff worked. I didn't vote for him in 2016. I voted for him this time. Really. Not in support of the Republican Party. But what it was, was an F you to the Democratic Party that I watched completely rig the democratic process in the primaries. If we are going to have a democracy, which we're not a democracy, we're a republic. That's how we were founded. That's what we are, whether you like it or not. Um, they Democracy doesn't work. Democracy means, and I don't want that to get misinterpreted. I mean, everybody gets a vote, but you also don't want to have it mob rule because in a true democracy, if a lo- the largest poor part of the poor, uh, population, say the poor people, they can just vote to make it law to strip the money from the rich people, that'll destroy society in the end. Anyways, that's my bro philosophy level knowledge of that. What? the left still hasn't understood is that there is a subset of Americans who are voting for Donald Trump on this reason. You're not going to tell me how to think and act, which has become, you're not going to tell me what I'm allowed to see. You're not going to say something is problematic. And I hope big tech realizes what's coming because what's coming at a certain point is enough conservatives get frustrated enough. And let me tell you something. I think Joe Biden is a one term president. I don't think he makes it through his entire presidency. I think Camilla Harris ends up being a Marxist disaster that is only kept in check that is only kept in check by Congress and the Senate. That's the, it, it, a lot of this, a lot of this was Americans flatly rejecting the road to Marxism, which is where Camilla Harris was leading us. You know, the Cuban population, they voted overwhelmingly for Donald Trump because a lot of these moves are straight up out of the Communist Manifesto. Don't get your, don't get it twisted. AOC, she's not about making things more equitable. She's about installing communism and Marxism in this country. And I, I, I say it all the time. I'm not opposed to certain socialist programs. I don't know what the right answer is whether a socialist medical system is the answer or a capitalist one is, I tend to think in a country this wealthy, why don't we run an experiment? Why don't we see which one is the most efficient? Okay? 
and never give either one a monopoly. No, you can have government workers in there saying, listen, we're competing against the private sector. You know, you want to keep your job, you're going to pump it out. But what they've done, and they're going to continue to do, is live in this echo chamber where they can't, they can't understand any reason why somebody just doesn't wholeheartedly embrace their ideas, no matter how loony they are. And when you say to them, like, look, man, uh, the, the, the Green New Deal makes no sense. It's too expensive. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm not behind it. Oh, you just want kids to die because you won't support what I'm saying. They just want to silence people. So the View host, Sonny Hostin, slammed 69 million un-American voters for looking the other way and backing racist, homophobic, misogynistic Donald Trump. I don't know if Donald Trump is racist because I can't read his mind. I'm pretty sure he's not homophobic, or if he is... He hides it well, considering he was the first American president to go into office openly supporting gay marriage. Misogynist, eh, I'm going to give you that one. It is probably the case. But then again, here we're back to it. Here we're back to it. No matter what reasons you're voting for Donald Trump, okay, let's just say that it was Camilla Harris in AOC running for office and they were out there fully campaigning to turn America into a socialist nation like Cuba, a communist nation like Cuba. And I know there's different levels of socialism. There's democratic social. I get all that, but it's always these. <laughs> how come, how come I, Every the Democratic Republic of North Korea, it's anything but democratic. But they could be running on that platform. And if you just said, "Look, I'm voting for Donald Trump solely on the rejection of uh, communism," they'd look at you and be like, "Well, you're racist, homophobic, and misogynist. You're also transphobic. You're probably Islamophobic because you won't vote for this Marxist system." They haven't learned because this is only going to ramp up from here and get more extreme. Donald Trump in this, it, Donald Trump in this environment with COVID almost beat Joe Biden because I really do think that it's going to be announced for Biden. It would be a really big surprise if it wasn't, but he still came within a pubic hair of winning this election. What do you think if the left, this, this has to be a wake-up call to the left, that you need to push back to the center because they lost the house. They didn't, they didn't, the blue wave that they thought was coming, where they were going to get to, where they were going to get to pack the courts, the, the, this nonsense with uh, the, the nonsense that they wanted to do, replace the electoral college and just go with a popular vote. I mean, how do you think lefties would react if you went with the popular vote and it wasn't a Democrat that won? They'd be out looting and burning. Well, not. The one's closer to the center, but the far left to be out looting and burning because all they have is actual threats. They don't have viable ideas. They just have threats. That's why they throw ad hominem attacks on you when you start to question their logic. Well, wait, what do you mean that we should have a quality of opportunity and a quality of outcome? Because not everybody's going to do the same amount of work. Like, I'll give you an example. At the job I'm at, I do a much better job than just about anybody on my crew. I don't get paid any more of them. I do it 
just because I view that's my job. It also keeps me busy while I work and the day goes faster. I hate walking around trying to find BS. But ultimately, here's something I also know about that. At a certain point, when it comes promotion time, I'm going to be one of the guys that they're looking to promote. I know that. It's a, it's a, it, it goes to, it's easy, it's easy to become, it's easy to become excellent when you're surrounded or easy to become great when you're surrounded by mediocrity. It's easy to stand out. Well, I know that. But let's say there was no incentive down the road. I'm not going to get a raise in the form of an advancement in a position. First off, let me tell you something. The job I do is not a job I particularly wanted to do or saw myself doing. But no matter what, I would do that job well and I would do it to the best of my ability solely for this reason. It's not about me. It's about me. It's about other people. To, not to give away. It's about helping other veterans. So it really doesn't matter to me. Yeah, of course, I want the raise and I want the extra money. But even if I wasn't ultimately going to get anything out of it, I would still do it to the best of my ability because I just view it as I would want somebody to do that for me. But I mean, for the most part, if you eliminate that, that you get more because you put in more, there you have it. People stop working hard. Why should they? You know, if AOC is, I wonder how she would feel if um, she campaigned for her senator, whatever she is, congresswoman, she campaigned and then a guy did no campaigning and they both got the same position. How would she feel about that? Or maybe she just barely eked out a win. Would she feel good about that? Or what if she lost? What if the guy did nothing? He was just some dude named Bill sitting in a bar somewhere, didn't campaign, just said, hey, I'm running for Congress. And AOC lost. Come the next one. She tries to unthrone him. She works even harder this time. This guy does nothing and he wins. She wins this time. Next time they run, she works her tail off again. He does nothing, wins. And it's a never ending cycle. At a certain point, she's going to stop putting in the effort because she's not getting the reward. You know? But that's basically what it was. It was, a, it was a flat rejection of taking the country into a completely uncharted territory on the left. Uh, the confiscation of guns. Because don't kid yourself. The Democrats on the far left want your guns. That's not a conspiracy theory. They flat out said it. Beta O'Rourke said when he ran. We're, oh, hell yeah, we're going to take your guns. Like this little scrawny, scrawny little politician that's never been in a fist fight is going to take my firearms from me. It's going to send a guy who's better at violence because it's it comes down to this. Hey, uh, if we're on the 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 frontier, and he's hey Jay, um, we just decided over there in Washington that uh, you're not allowed to own that, that weapon anymore. So I'm going to need to take it. I'm going to look at him and be like, yeah, you can get buried out here. <sighs> Plausible deniability. That's what's going to happen. Get the fuck off my property. But <clears throat> I digress. And I think, I think that, I think there's a possibility that this whole election will be a eye opener to the Democratic Party. That the American, like, they won. If Joe Biden wins, here's what happened. It's exactly what Peter Schiff happened. 
The people that were on the left that voted for Barack Obama and went right with Donald Trump because they were sick of the crap and Hillary Clinton went back left. But what they did is they voted for the Democrats in the House so that they could balance it out so that the Democrats wouldn't have complete control because they didn't trust them. I just hope that it's a it's a eye opener that to the oligarchs like okay we squeaked by this one time with this objectively bad choice but I don't think this is going to work again. We're going to have to find better candidates and I think the Democratic Party is going to have to come back to more of the center or they're just done. Because everybody can see what it is that they're doing. So, all right, I'm going to call that a podcast, and I will be back tomorrow, and hopefully there will be a president. Like and subscribe.